Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is directed by James Gunn and stars Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, uh, Bradley Cooper, and among others. And this film, it deals with the Guardians of the Galaxy having to protect Rocket Raccoon from the, the villain known as the High Evolutionary and embark on a journey to basically uh, look out to find a way to protect and, and cure Rocket from this uh, event that happens to him. Now I'll leave it there because there's just some other stuff I can't really go into detail if I'll go into major spoilers, but it also goes into some major backstory that we finally get revealed in this time with Rocket Raccoon. And this is also now the 32nd film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and uh, this also is the last film to be directed by James Gunn that is in the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy. Now here's a little backstory. Now this movie was directed by James Gunn, like I said, who had directed the other Guardians of the Galaxy films, and I, what can I say, I've been an avid fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies for a long time now, and ever since I saw it in 2014, not really knowing much about it from the comics, it got me really curious what they were going to do with this, and when I saw the first one back in 2014, I had such a blast with it. It was great to see, you know, more obscure kind of uh, characters that are from the comic books that really get to shine more in movies now. And it was the landmark. It was such a tremendous success that I, every time I kept seeing the characters going to other, uh, going to other films, including the second Guardians of the Galaxy, and then also in the Avengers films, you know, I couldn't get enough of it. And you know, I really enjoyed the way that they were able to blend like just a whole group of ragtag team of misfits. That were, they they were start out doing some kind of like not so good things where they were kind of like criminals, but then evolving into pretty much saving the world and stuff. Um, and so. After the first film, and the second one even, I got me really, see, I was really curious to see where they were going to do with the franchise for all, because I loved the second one so much, and seeing them going into other movies like the Avengers films, and then also hearing that they are going to do a third film, it really got me really curious, but for a long time now, it seemed like this was a film that was kind of having trouble getting along the way, because, well, not going into too much detail, but there was that thing that happened with James Gunn back when the third one was going to get made, and then he basically got fired from Disney over some over some personal stuff, and then he got hired back. And now that he pretty much wanted to cap off his trilogy with this one, and pretty and seeing how he's moved on to DC, I could see this as being basically his goodbye to Marvel, but in a good way. Because after upon seeing this film, what a sight to behold! Because this, along with the uh, the last Spider-Man film and Captain America, these are the three I think are the three best uh, trilogies that I've seen so far with the MCU films. And so to get my pros out of the way, I got to really hand it to the cast in this. They did all a tremendous job. You know, Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana coming back as Gamora. Um, you know, Bradley Cooper especially doing Rocket Raccoon again. And then also the biggest one, the biggest standout for me the most is the guy that plays the High Evolutionary. I thought he was not only very menacing as hell, but really cap captured a lot of what you expect from this kind of villain that has some beef with Rocket. And I can't go into major detail, but let's just say when they finally reveal his backstory with his con with, when it shows when he was with Rocket. Uh, this guy really knows what he really shows some really, doesn't hold him back when, in trying to be all fucking vicious the way he does with, you know, trying to basically uh, pretty much uh, get into into some experiments with him that it kind of reminds me a little bit, and I think this was an intentional inspiration of a certain film that reminded me from, that came out in the 90s that I'll leave it there. And let's just say it has to do with animals. Um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into detail on that. But to get my other pros, I gotta really hand it to the story in this. The way we finally get into some backstory with Rocket Raccoon in this. Not only was it very emotional as hell, especially when we get to see some other stuff that adds on to his character of why he finally becomes why we know who he is since he 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 kept it as a pretty big secret that he doesn't like to talk about in the other films. And in this one, man. There's a, let's just say there's a really big moment in this film that I don't want to go, I, I wish I could talk about, but it would be going to major spoilers, but when I saw it happen, it just, it really got me, you know, it really, really pulled my heartstrings, and it was really emotional as hell. And the way it also goes with the other rest of the Galaxy Guardians members, where they get fleshed out with a lot of other stuff that they fill in, I thought it was really great too, especially with some stuff that they fill in with uh, Star-Lord and with Drax, and also with Nebula this time as well, because there's a, there's a big... There's a lot of closure that we get for each of the characters in this. I think really works to its advantage, and uh, the, the James Gunn really knocked it apart with finally giving this the fitting, satisfying end of basically tying up loose ends and finally having our characters go on this one last journey that really put the stakes pretty high too, especially with what the High Evolutionary is pretty much embarking on with c causing total destruction and as the movie unfolds in a certain part. 
Um, and then the other biggest thing for me the most, too, is especially the soundtrack. You know, this, the movies, every film of the Guardians of the Galaxy keep getting better and better with their soundtrack. And while I did kind of prefer maybe one or two soundtrack a little more over this one, there is still some pretty good songs in this that I really enjoyed, and it really kept me on the edge. And a lot of the action scenes, well, when they blend in with the soundtrack, it really goes well with, you know, them having to, uh, you know, do what they do best when they're kicking ass and taking names. And... And the other one I got to really appreciate, too, the most is I like the way that the movie, you know, kind of fills in some time with having to uh, keep it on that really fun kind of vibe that you expect from the Guardians films. And the humor really works a lot to its advantage, where I was laughing throughout the movie, and it doesn't overall, it doesn't overshadow it like the, uh, it doesn't overshadow with any of the, um, the, the serious stuff, because when it blends in the Conwell, it blends in pretty good. Now, there are, might be some little minor things where not every joke lands, but that's still what you'd expect from the Guardians films at this point because they know, James Gunn really knows how to work well with comedic timing with a lot of his movies and stuff and with a lot of his actors and everything like that and the way that they blend it in with a lot of the serious stuff really it really blends really great. And going back into the action scenes, there's especially one particular action part I really enjoy the most where that I really got a kick out of uh, where it's mostly shot in one, where it seemed like it was kind of edited to make it seem like it was shot in one take and it was this hallway fight scene that takes place and man, that was not only really f cool to watch, but the way they're all kicking, they're all kicking the bad guy's ass and stuff. But just the way that the music plays along with that too is what I ex what you expect from the Guardians films. And so that was great. And then just uh, the way that it really builds upon the stakes after stakes really gets it to the most. Where you could, I really felt for the characters in this, like because anything could happen. Um, and now, if I do have to get into any kind of minor cons, I will say is that I do enjoy Adam Warlock in this because he was built up in the last film, but in the last Guardians film, but I will say that they did kind of underutilize him because it seemed like James Gunn was kind of like maybe forced to, he basically wanted through Adam Warlock in there at the last moment because he was trying to focus on the High Evolutionary, which don't get me wrong, I thought the High Evolutionary was still a great villain, and he's definitely one of the, the better MCU villains we've had in a while that I really enjoyed. In fact... To its advantage, I actually will say that as far as on that kind of intimidating level, I I did kind of like him a little bit better than I did with Kang. Not to discredit Jonathan Majors, because I thought he did a great job as Kang in Ant-Man 3, but I think as far as that kind of menacing level where he does seem like he's a lot more imposing, I think to a certain advantage, the actor in this, I think, did a really better job in certain aspects. But I think they're both on the similar, letter, similar level as, as far as being on that kind of way of, you know... One is basically trying to be more sympathetic, while this one is just flat out vicious. Now, there is one thing I will say, to get into just a minor con with that, is that even though the villain is really great and intimidating, the High Evolutionary feels like he did kind of have kind of a, um, not really anticlimactic, but kind of underwhelming sort of uh, comeuppance at the end of it, because it seemed like it was, it could have been put off with a better, a better payoff with his character, with his, uh, with his, with his character toward the end of it. But I'll leave it at there. Um, but other than that, though, I, that's really just my only minor things because other than... Because with Adam Warlock also kind of starting out was basically not really well-known like he is in the comics where he's still kind of learning as he goes. He still has some really cool moments I really enjoy, especially at the beginning when he's facing the Guardians and stuff. And then the way that it, it kicks into gear with him later on in the film really does... Um, you get to see a lot more of what he's going to probably be doing in the future. But I think, and I think Will Powder really did a great job with the character, and I really would like to see what they do with him. Um, it's just that starting off, it seemed like he was kind of stuck in the middle of everything in between that I think could have been fleshed out a lot better with. And they could have utilized his, his, his presence a whole lot more. But overall, though, I still really love this movie a lot, and it's definitely going to be in one of my favorite, mo favorite movies of the year. And so with that, I'm going to give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 a phenomenal grade on the Film Freaks meter. So, for those of you who have also seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and also the other films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next review. I'll see you later.